a while back, Mamo, the um, most uh, liturgical Nazarene on the internet, made a video suggesting that the 2019 Anglican Church of North America Book of Common Prayer it might be a sort of prayer book with uh, training wheels, something that was good for beginning. Now, I am uh, beginning an interesting journey in my life, leaving the familiar wonders of the Thames and the Cam, where I have more or less for 40 years used the, the uh, Western Orthodox version of the daily office. Uh, or the uh, less familiar waters of uh, of the Hell's Pond and the Volga and like, and, and I quite enjoy the uh, richness and the the uh, well, just luxury of the Anthologion, and it's a little bit easier to use with a lectionary the lectionary Bible. I mean. Things are laid out pretty much dum 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 right down the path. There's less jumping around than in some things, but still, the uh, order of of uh, the Western the Western daily office can be pretty daunting. And so, I was wondering if maybe this might be an interesting. Uh, and useful prayer book for those who might not have the luxury that I do living in my tin can with really no <laughs> no official uh, things to do besides the daily office. So I, I had seen a review of the Ancient Faith prayer book. The Ancient Faith publishing folks in Indiana published this book, A Psalter, which I do not have, and a couple of editions of the uh, Orthodox Study Bible. I don't have either of their editions of that either. It has uh, some additional prayers at the beginning, before and after communion, I think, is all there for. And the there is a, a leather soft edition, and this is the leather soft edition. I at first had ordered from Amazon the giant print edition, and it was an ugly book. <laughs> I mean, this one has, uh, you know, red caps and, and uh, a bit of fanciness about it. Uh, and the giant print I actually sent back. I have since seen uh, the paperback version of this size. Of the ancient faith prayer book, and it's very nice and costs very little. This one, I how much I paid for this. The um, the paperback I think costs thirteen dollars. So, what is it about this book that I might recommend? And do I think it is a training wheels prayer book, or maybe not so much a training wheels prayer book as a racing bicycle version of the prayer book. It is as uh, straightforward to use as one might find any book to be. Morning, afternoon, uh, meal times, early evening, late evening, prayers before and after early communion, the, the, um, the ones that um, I suspect we're in their edition of the Orthodox Study Bible, prayers for the departed, prayers for confession, which uh, my friend who has the paperback version says he particularly finds helpful, prayers for various needs and occasion, prayers for the saints, and a calendar of great feast and fast. It is uh, kind of interesting that the prayers for the for the saints, include uh, some nice Western saints, uh, Aydin of Lindisfarne, Ambrose of Milan, uh, 
Everybody likes Ambrose. And the, well, Patrick, I'm looking for Savroni. Um, now we're getting more into the Eastern, but we have also saints from sort of my, my favorite uh, crossover saint, Saint Sifroni of Essex in the Holy Mountain. Here we go. At the time this book was published, uh, Sifroni had not been recognized as a saint. But, you know, I say he's a crossover because he, you know, he famously spent much of his life on the Holy Mountain, and then he moved to not far from the from the banks of the <laughs> of the Thames. It has uh, prayers after the Liturgy of Saint James, as well as the more usual Liturgy of John Chrysostom and uh, and uh, the like. It has the odes. Uh, but what is fascinating about it is, I think, that it has the basic structure of all, all the uh, offices in, in, in a very stripped-down sort of sense. Uh, Psalm 90, 84, 85 in the morning. Um, and then short prayers for the hours. And one of the things that I really don't like about, oh, the sort of suggestions they make in the Anthologion is, they, you know, you, you do midnight office and then you're, you're immediately said to do matins and then immediately laws and then the first hour and you lose in that way the, uh, the connection of the prayers to the actual movement of the sun across the sky during the day. The movement of the sun that in Genesis we are told was put there for for our uh, understanding, perhaps. <laughs> it's the easiest way to say it, of the works of God. So these are little prayers for all the times. Uh, a lovely breakfast blessing. Again, you know, the, the, uh, the prayers in the Anthologion before your meals are about the size of this whole book. And, of course, that would be true if one were in a, if one were in a monastery. Vespers, of course, starts with Psalm 103. The translation of this, by the way, is not the same as the translation there's Psalter, which I don't have, but which I want to have. I... Um, I prefer, I, I admit that I prefer translations that have conies, whereas this has hairs, but that's okay, you know. Uh, hearts and conies are probably not that unlike deer and hares. Now, what I would suggest is this is not so much a training wheel sort of prayer book, but a racing bicycle prayer book. As I say, not everyone has the the luxury that I have living in my tin can with nothing to do but to make coffee and sip coffee and then enjoy books. Um, this is a this is a a prayer book for all you saints who have have real work to do out in the world. Saints who have to read and run. And I don't think it hurts a bit that it is a beautiful book. I don't think Psalm 50, let's see, does Psalm 50 occur in um, the morning office? Um, this being Tuesday, I didn't count, but, I, you know, Psalm 50, you see, only, only crops up. Once apparently in the whole of the day, this being Tuesday, uh, Psalm 50 came up in the Psalms, and not only in the, I mean, you know, in the Catisma, 
with his mother. <laughs> but in all the different offices, sometimes twice. I didn't count how many times I said Psalm 50 this morning, but it was a lot. Um, I don't know if if the mercy of God depends upon my saying Psalm 50 six times, seven times, eight times before breakfast. Um, I think the mercy of God depends upon more, well, perhaps nothing that I do. He's always willing to be more merciful than I am to receive that mercy. But I am perhaps encouraged to receive that mercy uh, by the constancy of my recognizing that it is indeed available. And this little book does, after all, provide an awful lot of beautiful opportunities to be aware of the mercy that is extended to us again and again. So, uh, would I recommend this as a training wheel? Well, I think it's better than that. I mean, you know, I'm a fan of any prayer book that has St. Patrick's breastplate in it, I must confess. And uh, I like, and indeed I am I'm pleased that, you know, there are all of these, all of these Western uh, saints in this book. I love the, I love the uh, icons of the church where I pray, but they're all, they're all Eastern Russian. There's a whole wall of Cappadocians, and I love the Cappadocian saints. But I'm going to see if I can't negotiate for us to have a little, a little corner of Celtic saints. One can, uh, I cannot go far wrong following St. Iden. Well, anyway, that's, uh, that's my two cents worth about this little book and, and you know I'm I'm curious whether how long I will last with the full full uh, rich diet of uh, all the hours uh, Lent is coming and perhaps you know <laughs> usually we add on psalm after psalm after psalm Canticle after canticle after canticle for Lent. But sometimes I wonder if maybe uh, less is more. Less prayed very thoughtfully uh, with an awareness of the grace that is being offered to us rather than uh, greedily. I, um, I have a tendency to to swallow my prayer sometimes without chewing. And the nice thing about a book that has um, has less bites in it is that there's more more uh, encouragement to, to chew carefully. Well, I would, as always, be delighted to hear your response. To what sorts of aids to prayer you find helpful and whether you like a, a little book or a big book or, you know, whether you want to be full on Russian or whether you're like uh, Memo, uh, convinced that there's never been a better liturgist than, than uh, Thomas Cranmer. And uh, I admit myself that I do find Cranmer to be... Uh, in many ways, a far better liturgist and dramatist, perhaps, than theologian. And there is a there is a, a a structure in in the liturgy of Cranmer that I have not yet to discover, as well expressed in the prayers of the East. Unfortunately, and I will talk more about this in another video. <laughs> there's no one else anywhere around me that prays I can pray with in this tradition and there is a, a wonderful community of people 
with whom I can pray in this tradition. So, you know, when in Byzantium, do as the Byzantines do.